Good evening. Most of you may know that Prometheus was a titan in Greek mythology, responsible for creating humans and gifting them with the power of knowledge, including fire. Now, the gods of Olympus, particularly Zeus, saw humans as a threat and preferred that they be kept in a primitive state and ordered Prometheus to remove their knowledge of fire. But Prometheus defied Zeus. Humans kept their knowledge of fire. Prometheus was thus harshly punished. In the mid-2000s, Prometheus, eventually having, having broken free from his punishment, came to the aid of humanity by giving us the ability to connect and to communicate with any other human on the planet through the internet. Democratizing power that had been consolidated by gatekeepers who owned and controlled the means of publishing and distribution. This power could be enjoyed by anyone who participated in social media. In recent years, those gatekeepers, just like Zeus before, have come to lament the societal upheaval that Prometheus caused by giving that power to us. But Prometheus wasn't done. Just last week, as has been mentioned, on March 14th, Prometheus delivered to us GPT-4 and kicked off an arms race, or perhaps a minds race, among the largest digital and social media platforms. Humans now have the ability to instantaneously connect and communicate with any other human on the planet and the ability to communicate with an emergent intelligence that has learned from our books our articles, our websites, and from hundreds of years of our recorded media. Humans, with a little help from Prometheus, became Zeus's greatest fear and grew too powerful for the gods to control. Indeed, we have now overthrown Zeus by engineering our own techno-gods. Ah, but I'm getting ahead of myself. In August of 2007, I wrote up the proposal for what would later become known as the hashtag. I suggested that we could use specially formatted words or phrases to label content on social media to make it easier to find and participate in relevant conversations. At the time, it seemed to me that social media creators needed an easier way to find others who shared their interests, and that any such method needed to fit the paradigm of the new SMS-based service that was growing in popularity amongst my San Francisco friends. And that service, of course, was Twitter. My proposal for the hashtag had to be necessarily pragmatic and clever, taking advantage of a new social network, Twitter, while also remaining compatible with the basic cell phones of the day. The iPhone, after all, had only come out in January of that year. The hashtag also had to be simple and easy to learn memetically, that is, through imitation. Hashtags had to provide more value to the creator through increased connection, visibility, and virality than it took to remember to add them in the first place. One way that I evaluated my early ideas was to apply the so-called drunk test. And what that entailed was me going out to a bar with a bunch of friends and having some drinks and then determining whether I could still successfully operate hashtags. As it turned out, I usually got better at hashtags the more I drank, and so it clearly passed the test. <laughs> In the first few months after I published my proposal, I was constantly on the lookout for use cases that would prove their utility. I found that use case in October of 2007 when my friend Nate Ritter was using Twitter to report on wildfires that were raging in his community in Southern California. He was using Twitter to share information that he'd gathered from the police and fire departments as well as local news outlets, organizations that hadn't yet gotten onto social media. To target his tweets to his community, he'd prefix them with San space Diego space fire, as in San Diego fire. But since Twitter didn't yet provide a way to follow phrases, his followers couldn't easily subscribe to get updates or to contribute to his reporting. Thus, I pitched Nate 
on using hashtags. And once he started using hashtag San Diego Fire, the behavior slowly caught on. His followers started to imitate him as they saw what he was doing, even though they didn't quite understand what he was up to. There was just this implicit notion that if Nate, who was pretty savvy about social media, was trying out something new, that other, people's, other people should also try as well. Now, if you've ever seen a viral dance on TikTok, you know what I'm talking about. And if you have ever engaged in a viral dance on TikTok, then you definitely know what I'm talking about. And no one's laughing at that, so you guys really need to use TikTok more. <laughs> Just kidding, don't. Wired Magazine ended up writing about Nate's use of hashtags and his foray into citizen journalism, which helped the idea gain visibility and legitimacy. Looking back, we didn't realize that we were benefactors of a Promethean gift, but naturally, we sought to spread access to that gift in opposition to the pattern of the previous information gatekeepers. Now, to clarify the analogy, once we saw the benefits of, quote, fire, i.e. social media, within our own social groups, we chose not to just keep it for ourselves. This meant helping each other figure out how to use and make sense of these new tools, and where possible, to build upon them in ways that would benefit every user of the system, preferably transparently and often through contributions to open source apps that anybody could improve upon without requiring prior permission. Our culture encouraged acting now and begging forgiveness later because there was simply too much to learn and to try and to do. What should we even have asked permission for? There was no master plan per se, except to grow these new tools and make them easier and more compelling to use by more and more people. Now, I never even worked for Twitter. I was simply the 1,186th person to sign up for the service. And yet I did change Twitter and social media forever. Fast forward 15 years, and you may wonder what my experience suggests may lie ahead in 2023 and beyond. Well, it seems somewhat fitting that just as Prometheus stole fire from the gods and gave it to humanity, it would be one of Zeus's natural wildfires that would fan the flames of social media and help the hashtag catch on as a cultural phenomenon. Because it's this tension between Zeus and Prometheus, between withholding some new technological capability versus unleashing it on humanity, that we must confront time and time again, and that we must confront once again now. Fire is essential for warmth, for cooking, for industry. But fire also necessitates fireplaces, fire extinguishers, and fire departments. Every technological revolution that empowers, equips, and enables necessitates equally robust mitigation strategies to stem its harms and negative effects. This is the path of progress. It's easy to focus on the negatives and just say, well, if we never adopted the new thing, we'd be much better off. But Zeus's conservatism excludes by ossifying existing power structures, preventing access to the widest and fullest human experience by the most people. In contrast, Prometheus's profoundly inclusive liberalism didn't provide much time for Zeus and his godlike buddies to prepare, adjust, or adapt to the changes that he wrought. And judging by the decline of multi-theism in the modern world, one could argue that Zeus was right for wanting to withhold fire from humanity, but he was still wrong. But then, of course, that's something that I would say as a mere mortal myself. But let's not get too caught up in the mythology or we will miss my key point. It was not fire that sparked the demise of Zeus, but rather humanity's cleverness and creativity. We invented the Zeus and Promethean mythologies as intellectual bulwarks against natural forces and phenomenon that we could not control nor comprehend. And with the AI, we must do it again. Fortunately, our species is equipped with a tool much greater than fire, and that is the plasticity of language, which grants us the ability to communicate, to connect, and to co-create, to make sense of the real world and the abstract world of ideas. Here's the thing, our language is infinitely adaptable and moldable by mere mortals, just like me, just like each of you. 
Fundamentally, what we must remember in moments like this, when our Zeus-like impulses are raging and we fear for our future due to advances in artificial intelligence, is that it is our cognitive abilities that brought us this reality in the first place. Now, more than any time in the past, we can do better for ourselves because we can communicate across generations and languages. More easily than ever, thanks to emerging capabilities from the inherent humanness of large human language models. LLMs are simply the sum total of our collective intelligence marshaled and mashed together, blinking back at us through a text input box, waiting for us to provide a prompt so that it can echo back to us what some human, somewhere else, in place or time, already figured out and wrote down long ago. To conclude, when social media was in its infancy, I dove in, captivated by its apparent ability to connect me with the rest of humanity and the rest of humanity with me through a simple, common interface. I proposed the hashtag as a way to amplify the signal of each message so that it would be, so that it more likely find the right recipient or recipients. And despite initial pushback to the idea, the hashtag succeeded and is now part of the fabric of human communication. Similarly today, and this is a general message, not just for folks who are here tonight, I would suggest leaning in and towards emerging technologies like ChatGPT, GPT-4, and other large language models that have sprung forth from our minds and to learn how to work with these tools in ways that ultimately augment our collective humanity. Because how else will we learn and adapt? How do we master fire? Prometheus gave us no manual. As we did, and are continuing to do so with social media, we must learn through trial and error and adaptation and evolution. And as we do, we must spread our learnings through the original and most special social media of all which is human language and communication. Thank you.